And for the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag. We are missing uh, two board members this evening. Uh, Mr. Stock and Mr. Baglioli uh, will not be in attendance. Uh, before m uh, moving forward, um, do I have any announcements? Just a, a quick announcement. Uh, Jeff and I met with Assemblyman Norris last Thursday. We had a good meeting. He's, he's always receptive to hear what we have to say. I'll just review quickly some of the things uh, we went over. Um, we told him that we support an increase in the uh, foundation aid uh, above what the governor has promised because he just allocated $35,000, which is uh, about $8 a student. It's very difficult to, to work with that. We talked about um, we would be against the merging the 11 categories of aid that would hurt us as a district. Um, we, uh, we said we would be okay with the permanent tax cap, but we need some additions to that, especially when we have to pay for a BOCES project. We'd like to see that as an, uh, an exemption to that. Um, we support uh, the uh, TRS Reserve Fund es establishing that uh, and the school bus stop arm camera. Um, we, we would be opposed to the state control over funding allocations. We think that's a, a thing that the local district should do and, and not to, you know, have to uh, uh, worry about that from the state. And we are supporting the age of 21 for buying tobacco products and vaping products. So we had a pretty good meeting and uh, we're, we're glad that he's always open to listen to us. Thank you for the update. Sure. <coughs> Anybody else have an announcement? Um, I have uh, one in front of me, I, uh, one of our board members, uh, Mr. Priori, um, is being honored and recognized um, by the School Administrators Association of New York State uh, as a recipient of the 2019 <coughs> Irvin Schwartz Distinguished Retiree Award. Um, and as we know from his time on the board, uh, Dennis uh, gives tremendously back to the community. Uh, but in addition to the Clarence uh, School Board, uh, he is also very active within his church, uh, within um, the Clarence Youth Board, uh, serving and uh, as liaison on various PTOs over the years, and uh, helped to coordinate uh, the relaunch of the Niagara Honor Flight as well, very active there. So uh, there there's a press release that hopefully everybody will be uh, have the opportunity to read in full uh, later on, but congratulations, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I guess, Dr. Hicks, superintendent's report. Thanks. I will go quickly through the new stuff and skip over some of the old stuff. So one thing that's new is that the Assembly and the Senate released their one house budgets. This chart provides a quick view of how things compare. Um, the total increase to education way up from where the governor had it, although this much money does not exist in New York State, so we don't anticipate getting everything. But both the Senate and the House are at 1.6 billion total aid to education, and in that, both the Senate and the House are over $1 billion for foundation aid. The governor, remember, was at $338 million. If it comes close to a billion for foundation aid, and there's no guarantee that we'll have an on-time budget. When Dennis and I spoke with Assemblyman Norris, he was hopeful for the on-time budget because there's a couple things like pay raises for the legislatures uh, that is in there. Uh, but unless they get completely on time or a week late, you guys are going to have to vote for the first time in a while without complete knowledge of state aid. But if it does come close to a billion dollars, uh, we might get enough so that we could do something next year in terms of an addition. But I don't want to make any promises. My man Rick would not allow me to make any promises. So we'll see how it plays. And you can always, you know, after the fact, after the budget is adopted, we can always talk about personnel at that time. Um, the foundation aid formula is different between the Senate one house, the Assembly one house, and the governor. Governor recreated the entire formula. Both the Senate and the House want to go back to the old campaign for fiscal equity formula, which would drive more dollars towards Clarence. Um, the governor uh, increases tuition rebates for charter schools. 
the assembly rejects that, the Senate wants to f use that money to fund building aid or to fund uh, foundation aid. Expense driven aids, they're all on the same page. Governor wants to pay them out as though they have been calculated and the Senate and the assembly agree. Couple of things that the governor wanted, combining the 11 aid categories into a cap, a 10 year average on personal income to cap school aid, capping star exemptions, $10 million to private schools, $1.5 million in teacher grants. The Senate and the Assembly would rather see that money put towards foundation aid until it gets fully funded rather than coming up with new things. The governor will get some of what he wants, but those, those are the basic differences. Big differences in foundation aid, big differences in total aid to schools. Um, we've already been through this a couple of different times. It hasn't changed since our first draft. These are our expenses for the 2019-20 rollover budget, maintaining our staffing at the current levels. These are the revenue assumptions for 2019-20. Tax cap of 3.2%, that is our number. Um, all other revenues by about $900,000. And we will use fund balance uh, and other, all, other reserve revenues to make up the difference if we don't get enough from New York State. From a program perspective, we are still uh, in agreement administratively that our most pressing need is for student mental health services, uh, perhaps a behavior coach or some type of a position like that. But we're going to wait and see what happens with foundation aid before we make that recommendation to the board. We can't really add any personnel in the current iteration of our budget, which has built into it the executive number for state aid. Uh, this is how our cap number was calculated. It's 3.2%. Uh, we went through last week the difference, or a couple weeks ago, the difference between rate and levy. We have the lowest tax rate in western New York. Uh, we anticipate it will still be under $14 per thousand, probably significantly under $14 per thousand when all of the estimates come through at the town level. Um, on an average house, $31 on, an on a $100,000 house, $62 on a $200,000 house, $93 on a $300,000 house, that's the 3.2% impact. Um, these assumptions are all the same as what we've had before. We did get a pension decrease. Here's something new. Uh, we've been doing this for the past four or five years, taking a look out at a five-year projection. This was originally at the behest of the board, and it's a really good idea. So Rick puts together numbers for revenue and expenses over five years. The five-year projections for expenses show an increase of about $2 million every year, uh, year over year for maintaining our budget. Some of the, uh, some of the assumptions that are in there, a 3% rise in wages annually, some of the projected retirements are built in, benefits rising from 4 to 5%, uh, contract and supplies 2%, BOCES about 3%, our debt service is really flat until 2022, then one of our issues expires. We're talking through that with the potential capital project at this point to have that come on. This is the revenue side. We're at about a 2% increase in sales tax per year built in here. Uh, local revenues are flat year over year for the next five years here. Our tax levy for the purposes of making this estimate is about 3% per year. Uh, that's been about what it's been the past three or four years on average. Uh, we need to utilize the reserve for debt to continue paying down the tax levy. We're, we will do that. And state aid in here is increased by 3% per, per year. That's a little ambitious. We're about 1% this year. Uh, but if the foundation aid does come through, we could be close to that 3% number. So you can see that the revenues don't exactly match the expenses. Uh, we're, we're a little bit in the black <laughs> if everything goes true, but that probably won't happen. Correct, Mr. Mancuso? Correct. Okay. Um, by law, we are to provide the community with a three-part budget. And when we create our budget newsletter and send home our budget postcard, these are the facts and figures by law that must be on there. We must divide our budget into three chunks, administration, capital, and instructional. And you can see that on the administration side, there's about a $250,000 increase from 1819 to 1920. There's actually a decrease in benefits, and that's because TRS went down. 
On the capital side, about a $400,000 increase. And the big chunk of the budget is instruction. So the program portion of the budget is about 74%. The capital part of the budget is about 18%. And the administrative part of the budget is about 8%. So um, all told, the benefits goes down, go down for the instructional portion of the budget, again, because the TRS, the retirement system pension numbers, went down. Uh, again, this is our summary page. Our budget this year, 83.1 million. Our increase on the levy will net us about one and a half million. We'll need about $900,000 of additional revenue from state aid, pilots, Medicaid, et cetera, et cetera. That would bring us to 85 and a half million as our new budget number for 2019-20. Uh, this was our plan for the buses. Nine total buses, uh, seven big buses, two wheelchair van buses, accounting for our trade in about $934,000 on that particular bond. Some voting information quickly. Tuesday, May 21st, the statewide vote from 7 to 9 p.m. at the high school gym. Don't miss the art show that will be there as well. Proposition 1 is the budget. Proposition 2 is the bus purchase. And there are two seats for the Board of Education that will be open. These have been all the meetings that we've talked about the budget. We have a couple more left. Our April meeting is when the board will adopt the budget for the 2019-20 school year. May 6th is the public hearing on the budget. We've really already done everything, but Rick will repeat it then by law. And then May 21st is the budget vote. Not a lot of changes because really nothing's changed at the state level. Any questions on the budget from the board? Okay, Any that's the world's, the world's record fastest budget presentation. <laughs> so. I just one, one point just to, to clarify. Um, and I know you said it a couple times, but you know, we are looking, the proposal is to go to the tax cap of 3.2%. Uh, but even doing so, that requires us to use fund balances to, to balance the budget from a revenue yes. perspective. And again, we could reduce the amount of fund balance that we utilize if we get additional state aid, or we could use that additional state aid for uh, positions or equipment or supplies that we might need. Okay? Okay, that concludes superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, at this point, just would entertain a, a motion to move to executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular person and for legal reasons to consider a contractual agreement. I make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, and we will be back uh, to address the personnel items in public session afterwards. Thank you. Seven thirty-eight. I'd like to call the meeting back to order. Um, as we return to the agenda, number three um, is the financial report, and we have before us um, selection of an architect for a potential capital project. Um, there will be a motion to approve Kadeni Architects as the architect of record for this project. Who would like to make that motion? Yeah. Do I have a motion for? I make a motion. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Mr. Denny? Aye. 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 That carries. <coughs> uh, personnel, Dr. Patak? Mr. Fuchs, we just have a few items here. Uh, an extension of a leave of absence as well as appointing two individuals to the substitute bus driver list. Any questions on items P1 and P2? Seeing none, could I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries. We have our public input session for the evening. <laughs> Seeing no one in attendance, we will uh, assume that uh, we can move on. Um, so with that, I uh, would entertain a motion to adjourn, uh, adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular person. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you.